morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. A warm welcome this morning as we gather on this, the fifth Sunday of Epiphany. As we gather, know that after the service, it, down in the fellowship hall, there will be a conversation around the table with the Multicultural Committee about the civil rights trip that we are planning for this summer. If you'd like to hear a little bit more about that, please let us know. Come on downstairs. Uh, if you're not able to make it and you want more information, please touch base with Jane or Janice or Ron after the service as well. Invite you to make sure you are either here or online next Sunday for our congregational meeting at 11 o'clock. Uh, it will be open on Zoom at 1030, and the council has said if we don't have a quorum by 1130, uh, we will call it at that point, so please uh, make sure you're available for that either in person or on Zoom next Sunday at 11 o'clock. There's going to be a virtual Fat Tuesday Pancake Day. It is an all-day, all-you-can-eat pancakes in your own home. So make them yourself, and you're welcome then to donate toward the civil rights trip, either online or uh, sending in a check, uh, and just mark it for the Multicultural Committee or for the civil rights trip uh, for the Tuesday before Ash Wednesday. We will have Ash Wednesday worship here at noon, and Midtown Lutheran Parish services will be at noon during Lent, and at noon it'll be rotated to each of the Midtown churches uh, during that season of Lent, and we'll let you know uh, when and where those are. They'll always be at noon, though. If you do have Palm Sunday branches uh, from last year, you're welcome to turn those in uh, before the last Sunday in February, and we will burn those and make our ashes for Ash Wednesday. Invite you to keep in your prayers, uh, Jackie and Marlene uh, Wilton. Uh, they are planning on moving down to Tennessee to be near their son. Uh, and might have taken place uh, in this meantime, as Marlene is going to be a little delayed as she's still in rehab. But please pray for Jack and Marlene in this time of transition for them. Also, please keep in your family the family of Bert Swain, who's in hospice care at Serenity House in near Oregon. Uh, please keep Barb and their children in your prayers and Bert as he may pass uh, in this time of anticipation of their loss. So please keep uh, their family in your prayers. We gather at the font, invited by Jesus to come and follow uh, as the disciples were invited by the Sea of Galilee uh, to follow and leave their nets. We are called again today uh, to pay attention to the Spirit's calling us. So please stand if you're able as we gather now at the font as we begin our time of worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates us, redeems us, and calls us by name. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and your beloved children. We have turned our faces away from your glory when it did not appear as we expected. We have rejected your word when it made us confront ourselves. We have failed to show hospitality to those you called us to welcome. Accept our repentance for the things we have done and the things we have left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us and lead us, that we may bathe in the glory of your Son, born among us and reflect your love for all creation. Amen. Rejoice in this good news. In Christ Jesus, your sins are forgiven. You are descendants of the Most High, adopted into the household of Christ, and inheritors of eternal life. Live as freed and forgiven children of God. Amen.
Lord be with you. Let us pray. Most holy God, the earth is filled with your glory, and before you angels and saints stand in awe. Enlarge our vision to see your power at work in the world, and by your grace makes us heralds of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of Thy love. At the impulse of Thy. store. Take my life and I will be ever only all for thee. Ever only all for thee. Take my voice and let me sing always only for my king take my lips and let them be filled with messages from thee filled with messages from Our first reading is from Isaiah 6. In the year that the king Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. The seraphs were in attendance above him, each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me! I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraphim touched my mouth with it and, and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. And then I heard the voice of the Lord say, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, here I am, send me. And he said, go and say this, to the, say this to people. Keep listening, but do not comprehend. 
Keep looking, but do not understand. Make the mind of this people dull and stop their ears and shut their eyes and comprehend with their minds and turn and be healed. And then I said, how long, O Lord? And he said, until cities lie waste without inhabitant and the houses without people and the land is utterly desolate until the Lord sends everyone far away and the vast and vast is the emptiness in the midst of the land. Even if a tenth part remain in it, it will be burned again. Like a terebinth or an oak whose stump remains standing when it is felled. The holy seed is its stump. Word of God. And for our Psalm uh, 138, we will say responsively. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart before the gods. I will sing your praise. Bow down toward your holy temple and praise your name because of your steadfast love and faithfulness. For you have glorified your name and your word above all things. When I called, you answered me. You increased my strength within me. All the rulers of the earth will praise you, O Lord when they have heard the words of your mouth. They will sing of the ways of the Lord that is great is the glory of the Lord. The Lord is high, yet cares for the lowly, perceiving the haughty. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you keep me safe. You stretch forth your hand against the fury of my enemies. Your right hand shall save me. steadfast love endures forever. Do not abandon the work of your hands. And our second reading is from 1 Corinthians 15. Now I would remind you, siblings, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I, turn, I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve, then he appeared to more than 500 siblings at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I procuse per persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. Word of God. Please stand for the gospel lesson from Luke chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. Once while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Gennesaret, and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little while from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've, we've worked all night long, but have caught nothing. 
Yet, if you say so, I'll let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching people. When they had brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed him. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you, my friends in Christ, as we gather on this fifth Sunday, hearing good news of the invitation that God's grace and mercy touches our lips, and we are forgiven. The call to Isaiah and this image of God's hem filling the robe reminds us the holiness of God and the holiness that we experience when we know and experience the presence of God in our lives in daily ways. Whether it's in the temple, or along the shore of Lake Gennesaret, or at a Cracker Barrel. Yesterday, I had the chance to go down to the Cracker Barrel in Ottawa, Illinois, right off the interstate in Route 23. Tammy's dad and three brothers, who range from 72, 73, 81, and 85, have been getting together at that Ottawa Cracker Barrel for many years in retirement. Uh, Ottawa is a family location as well of some relatives who once lived there, but it's also sort of a central place between Woodstock, Huntley, and Gridley, Illinois, where the brothers live. The stories are always amazing if I ever get a chance to come and participate in this late, early lunch, late breakfast, 11 o'clock meal. They recall times always in these stories and this time, the stories were about snow and a three-wheeler, pulling a tube with some of the grandkids, or when they were even younger, when one of the older brothers got the tractor out on the country road and pulled them on the, off, from behind the tractor in a tube in and out of ditches on the county road behind the tractor. I, I was amazed at some of the stories that I'd never heard and always was intrigued by stories that have an interesting take, like the one about one of the grandkids getting hit with a snowball, and all four of them kind of like looking at each other going, who threw the snowball? If you say so, they texted one of the grandchildren and found out it wasn't any of the four brothers as uncles doing that. It was uh, someone else we won't blame or name. If they say so, these stories are always an invitation to me to enter into a, a boat filled with memories and love and stories never heard before. Today's gospel lesson for me, Luke 5, is about a boat, an invitation, and a sermon. We know that there are three disciples mentioned in this gospel lesson, and it's not later in their lives, but it is the beginning of this journey of following Jesus. Simon and James and John had been fishing all night long. They didn't catch much at all, if anything. Maybe Andrew was there because he was a brother to Simon Peter. But the partners are there on the shore cleaning their nets. Disappointment abounded as they start to hear Jesus talk. He shows up along the lake, starts teaching some people, and pretty soon there's a crowd along the Sea of Gilead. Gennesaret, Sea of Galilee. And Jesus is probably aware of the acoustics working better from a boat in a more open space in order to project his voice so people can hear. He sees a boat, it's Peter's boat, and he thinks it's going to make a good pulpit. He asks them to put out a little bit from the shore, and they get out at a certain point, and like a good rabbi, they didn't stand to teach, they sat to teach, and in a boat, it's Probably not good to stand anyways. J 
Jesus sits down, tests the mic. Can you hear me now? He begins to teach them. But we don't know what he taught them. It's in Luke's gospel. We have no idea. Nothing is recorded about what Jesus taught. We know that there's the Sermon on the Mount, the sermon from Matthew 5. But today's sermon in the boat are no words recorded. Matthew and Mark do record that Jesus taught from a boat, and the parable of the sower and maybe the mustard seed is in that recollection. But in Matthew and Mark, that's it. In Luke, there's nothing. He just sits down in the boat and starts to teach. I'd like to think the sermon title was, If You Say So. Because that's what Peter will eventually say after the sermon is over and Jesus invites him out to do some more fishing during the day. So what did he teach? Perhaps he was teaching stuff like, you've heard it was said that you shall not bur murder, but I say if you get angry with people, you, will, you are a fool and you, are, you shall be judged. And everybody said, if you say so. You've heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemies. But I say, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. And everybody said, you say so. Perhaps Jesus said, an eye for an eye, for a tooth for a tooth. You've heard it was said, but then everybody will become blind and toothless. I say, pray for your enemies. And everybody said, you may want to overthrow Rome because you don't want to pay those taxes to that military industrial complex, but you should at least pay a little because they make good roads and the aqueduct gets everybody water. And everybody said, if you say so. I know you've heard that Capernaum's soccer team is really good, but really Syrian soccer team is much better. Saw them on ESPN yesterday. And everybody said, I know the Cubs are the best team, and the Sox are not. And everybody said, no, they didn't say if you say so. At a certain point, Jesus is done preaching, teaching. He gets out of that mode and looks at Peter for this calling to Peter. And he says, why don't you put out a little farther so we can do a little more fishing? And Peter, who's tired, probably from fishing all night, says, you know, we've been working all night and we didn't catch anything, you know. But if you say so. You know, they wash the nets. The best fishing really is at night, maybe Peter's thinking. You know, Jesus, you're a carpenter. But if you say so, at your word, which is another way of saying, if you say so. So they throw the nets out, and there's a miraculous catch of fish. They need the other boat to help, their partner, because the fish are just amazingly coming into the nets. Now, are they blessed by this miraculous catch? Absolutely. Do the blessings of God benefit not only us, but people around us? Absolutely. Does this cryptocurrency cash flow mean that they should continue to invest and know that God will bless them if they only believe, according to Joel Olstein? No. Because what do they leave with the riches they have? They leave them behind. It is an economic redistribution of wealth for all of the people who are hungry along the Sea of Galilee. The calling isn't just for them to prosper. It's for everybody to benefit from the kingdom of God breaking in. And Peter is humbled by the fact that God is doing something new through Jesus. That everyone will be blessed. Not just him and his partners. But they will all experience the fullness of God feeding everyone. Peter is humbled. And he knows something is different. He doesn't know yet what that will mean because this is just the beginning. But he's in the presence of the holy. And he is humbled and says, go away from me, master. I don't deserve this. I'm a sinful man. 
it makes me very aware that at Christmas, I often ask kids, how many presents do you deserve? And the answer, of course, is none. We don't deserve anything. Everything is a gift. Peter's aware of that. And he humbly bows before Jesus. But Jesus says, do not be afraid. Don't be afraid. God's not here to smack you upside the head for not believing. He's not going to condemn him for his lack of belief. He says, you will catch people. You will draw people into this life. You will be my follower, as he says, come and follow me. You're going to catch people who will experience the same mercy. And you won't be a student who's being like in a classroom distributing knowledge from one to another. You'll be invited into a relationship as an apprentice. So don't be afraid. Eventually you will do what I do on a certain level of sacrificing your lives because all of these disciples will not worship the state of Israel, will not worship at the temple only. They will worship the Holy One, the God of all creation, who makes fish rain. This radical call into being a disciple of Jesus is about following only one. Not stuff, not culture, not money, not our traditions, but following the one who is pouring out mercies into our lives. And the net benefit is that all are blessed. All experience this deeper and broader relationship. And we hear again that sermon in the boat, and we all say, if you say so. down to the lake shore seeking neither the wise nor the wealthy but only asking for me to follow sweet lord you have looked into my eyes kindly smiling you've called out my name on the sand I have abandoned my small boat. Now with you I will seek other seas. You know full well what I have, Lord. And you measure nor weapons for conquest, just these my fish nets. And will for working. Sweet Lord, you have looked into my eyes, kindly smiling. You've called out my name. On the sand, I have abandoned my small boat. Now with you, I will seek other seas. my hands my exhaustion working love for the rest of the weary a love that's willing to go on loving sweet lord you have looked into my eyes kindly smiling you've called out my name on the sand seek other seas you who have fished other waters you the longing of souls that are yearning oh loving friend you have come to call me sweet Lord you have looked into my eyes kindly smile said I have abandoned my small boat now with you 
And now let us confess our faith in God through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended to heaven, and he's seated at the right hand. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Gathered in the holy light of unconditional love from God through Christ, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Let us pray. Holy Lord, be present and guide us in our shared ministry in Christ's name as Christ has done and taught us. We pray for your church throughout the world. We pray especially for Bishop Eaton, Bishop Clements, and Pastor Thomas for Pastor Silva Kumar and the leadership of the Sapuka Church in Tanzania. We pray for all those newly ordained and those recently installed into new leadership. We pray for all churches, theologians, councils, committees, and all other offices that serve your ministry, O Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Creator God, bring healing to your injured creation. Guide us to steward it to your intended purpose and guide us to share your abundance with all of created beings. Be present with everyone who has been impacted by severe weather and humanitarian disasters, especially all those impacted by tornadoes, snowstorms, and ice storms, especially those in the Northeast, in the South, and in the Midwest. Be present with all who are devastated by wars, pandemic, global warming, political and economic crises, especially in Tanzania, Madagascar, Afghanistan, Iraq, Syria, Israel, Palestine, Ukraine, and Belarus. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful God, in a world of pandemic, systemic injustice, and in withholding resources, be present with all those on the front lines especially all vaccine scientists, all healthcare employees and first responders, and especially during this Omicron wave. We pray for all in businesses during this wave of supply shortages and worker shortages, and all in education. Be present with all who navigate decisions to protect communities and loved ones. Guide us, Lord, to remember that all are part of the body of Christ, we pray especially for all those on the front lines dismantling racism and all other injustices. We pray for all those in the grassroots movements and public office. Lord, in your mercy. Blessed Lord, in the season of light and continual self-disclosure of your presence in human form, we give thanks for all the blessings and good news of your internal love for all through your son, Jesus Christ. We give thanks especially for all birthdays and anniversaries. And we give thanks to everything that we name aloud or in our hearts. Thank you, God, for the gift of community, of new beginnings, of memories and stories, and opportunities to uniquely, to gather uniquely and safely and in the life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy. Healer God, grant peace and love to those who are suffering in mind, body, and spirit. Bring peace and love to all where winter is a tough season. Bring comfort to all who grieve, especially for the families of Cliff Fields, of Jerry Koenig, of Brian Sautel, of Bill Drilling, of Pastor Amy Nyman, of Gabby, of Mark Kalachi, and of Roger Schmidt. We pray for all who need healing, especially Jack and Marlene, Charmaine, Miriam, Diana, Frank, Yolanda, Vonda, and Marsha, and anyone else we name aloud or in our hearts.
be with everyone who is dying, especially Bert, Bert Swain, and all who will die this day. Remind all who are dying of their eternal life with you, O God. Lord, in your mercy. And to your gracious hand, O Lord, we commend for all whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share a sign of peace with one another. You may be seated as we prepare for the celebration of Holy Communion at home. If you have bread, wine, juice, crackers of some sort, please prepare that now. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me the body of Christ broken for you. Amen. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup and gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me, the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. A reminder that there are baskets in the back to place your communion containers. Let us pray. God of the welcome table, in this meal, we have feasted on your goodness and have been united by your presence among us. Empower us to go forth sustained by these gifts so that we may share your neighborly love with all. Through Jesus Christ, the giver of abundant life. Amen. Let us pray the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The God of hope, fill us with all joy and peace in believing, so that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit, through Jesus Christ, for whom we wait. Amen. Let us stand and sing, Here I Am, Lord.
hearts of stone. Give them hearts for love alone. I will speak my word to them. Whom shall I send? Here I am, O Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will. bread I will provide till their hearts be satisfied I will give my life to them whom shall I send here I am Lord is it I Lord I have Jesus invites us to put our boats out into the deep, and we say, if you say so, go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.